What's up, guys? It's Willie. Welcome to yet another amazing episode we have lined up for you. And I just want to say a big shout out to Nini Wase Water when you're on a likey page, on a likey content. You know, let's keep tech-ed. Let's keep it tech-ed. Let's, let's keep it real. And let's keep the conversation going. Because you, Sema, you know, it's tech education to get you teched. And today we have an amazing review lined up for you. Now, this is the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE. And, uh, you know, just before you even dive into the phone, the FE lineup, the lineup for Samsung, and at the end of the year, it was a combination of all the amazing things that Samsung had done throughout the year. So they released what they call a fan edition. So this was those, it was that one phone that you would look out for. It was an amazing, amazing device. It was the fan edition. I mean, Iliguele phone yama fans. And um, from the S20 FE, which was the first FE, we had the S21 FE. We didn't have the S22 FE, but we now have the S23 FE. It's that phone, especially if you look at the Kenyan landscape um, right now, because we have the A54 as the best that Samsung can offer in the A series. And then we have the S23. So it's the in betweener. You don't have enough money uh, to buy the ultra high end, and maybe you're settling for you're not set, the the A54 does not give you that you know does not give you that vibe that you're looking for. So not after you have and that this is where this phone lies. But we have to answer this question before we are done: Does it really meet the F? E line of what Samsung has to offer. And just before that to dig in, what I know the specs, you know, right off the box, what you get when you buy this phone, it's a 6.4 inch full HD, it's a 1080p, uh, 120 hertz display. So um, it goes all the way to 120 hertz. It, you know, I mean, if the A54 has a 120 hertz, then the FE ideally should have that. So it's 120 hertz display, 6.4 inches, amazing display. You get your glass back. That's one of the things that I'd say really um, got me looking out for the S23, the fact that it actually comes with a glass back. It has your Exynos 2200s. I'm gonna mention something about that because USA actually got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Uh, it has your Eclipse 920 GPU, which I'm also gonna talk about. Um, you, ideally, what you get out of the box is the 8 GB RAM, 128 GB, although there's a 256 GB option. Has your triple camera array, your 50 megapixel wide, eight megapixel telephoto, and your 12 megapixel ultra wide. The video, what it, it, it's capable of doing, especially because it carries a 50 megapixel main camera is that it can shoot 8k at 24 frames per second 4k at 30 frames per second 1080p and all that is your 10 megapixel selfie camera um, has your wi-fi 6 bluetooth 5.3 um, usb type c 25 watt uh, your 4500 milliampere battery and your optical under display fingerprint so those are the specs just right out the box so this is not your s23 Neither is it your A54, it's somewhere right there in the middle. But depending, especially because they really removed the A74 series, um, ideally you're, you're getting a trade-off. Because if you ask me, uh, this would have been the perfect A74. Now, do Samsung could launch A74 in its place, Wakatoa, the S23. FE. Now, I don't really have a problem with this phone. It's an amazing phone. I've taken photos with it. It takes amazing photos. I mean, this is something we are talking about. And you see the Exynos 2200 is built on the same phononometer process like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. However, uh, it's Exynos. Again, that's my other challenge. And you see, for the very first time, uh, when we moved over to the high end of Samsung, we, for some time, we had the competition between Exynos, Snapdragon, Exynos, Snapdragon, and that was key when they decided to launch all their high end phones with the Snapdragon platform, which gave us the best that uh, Samsung could give. But now, when they've reintroduced Exynos, it makes you feel a certain type of way because, man, conversation yeah the chipsets that don't give you enough power now let's talk about the s23 you know one the build quality i like it's sturdy it's a bit 
fat if you ask me but it's sturdy it's, uh, i mean car carries in all that space so that you can carry your 4500 milliampere battery i like the glass back and now this glass back is good because now it allows you to have wireless charging which you actually do for the s23 you have wireless charging for the s23 fe um it comes with all your standard you know it's it's a it's a pretty packed niche device your cameras as i said i've taken some photos outside your display that goes all the way to 450 nits i've actually used it outside and it's pretty bright but this is my trade-off my one trade-off this is if you are given an option to get a cheaper s23 you'd ideally most probably go for that rather than taking the s23 fe now, listen to me. I'm not saying that this phone is bad. I'm saying that this would have been the perfect A7 IV. Because one, they carry the same design language. If you look at the A54, you look at the S23, you look at this, they carry the same design language. So that's one thing that you actually get across the board. The design of the back is the same. It comes in four amazing colors. Uh, this almost gray, there's a lavender, there's a white, uh, so it has pretty nice color options. It's a pretty sturdy phone. I've used it for uh, about a week or so. I have loved uh, the, the, the gameplay. I actually came back to playing Call of Duty uh, just to try out this phone. Um, although it really drained my battery while playing Call of Duty, that's an Exynos problem. But ideally, it performs or flies through your daily tasks pretty well. You know, your photography, your normal usage, rep replying texts, calling and all this, that it flies through like, like nobody's business. I mean, it's your fan edition, but it, for me, doesn't really live to the fan edition tagline because the S20 FE was the phone that when it came out, I actually wanted to buy for myself. Only that at that point, I was using the Note 20. So I was thinking, okay, that would be a trade down because it doesn't have the pen. But the S20 FE was, was perfectly specced for a fan edition. And that's what, it, that's what branded the FE lineup. Well, I, I feel for me, this will not be, be your ideal FE, although it's a good trade down. If you don't have enough money to buy the S23 or the S23 Plus, However, I feel Samsung would have done a bit better with specking this for us, especially in just giving us the 8 Gen 1 Samsung really some good way to 8 Gen 1, which would have been nice. But to really round up, because I don't, I have much to say and not much to say at the same time, I mean, uh, but one, you have a, an amazing phone, amazing display, amazing battery, amazing cameras, a good build quality and ideally overall a very good phone the trade-off for me is the fact that it's not your perfect fe and especially here in the kenyan market it launches for a hundred thousand so add a few thousand and you have your s23 uh, so that's where i feel cringed about but ideally as of the phone itself if there was no s23 lineup to compare this to um, this would have been perfect so what would be your thoughts about the galaxy s23 fe to engage in the comment section if you see more is jakarta let i mean falls in a pretty thin line between uh living up to the s23 name or the a7 IV, which I feel this would have been perfect as an a7 IV and priced better. I mean, price this phone at 80K, you have me. But that's a wrap from us, guys. Tell us in the comment section what you think. Peace out. <laughs>